In this video, we'll see how we can customize our action listener to be able to handle multiple buttons. Previously, we had an action listener that is going to handle a button, and based on the click of that button, we will perform a certain operation. Now I have multiple buttons here, and I wanted to perform a different operation when I click a different button. So this is going to mimic a uh, simple calculator with four operations. When I click any number of those numbers, the number should appear here on the label. And if I say 1 and then 2, it should have 1 followed by 2. So I can generate my number here and then click one of the operations. The number is going to disappear, but it's going to be saved somewhere. So I'm able to enter the second number. And then when I click the equal sign, it is going to perform that operation on both numbers. Now the delete button here is just deleting the last number I entered we can set it up to delete both numbers later on so if I run this right now it is going to give me the interface but if I click any button nothing is going to happen because I did not add the action listener for those buttons and this is what we want to do in this video so before this let me guide you through the code so you can see what is going on First of all, I created all of my variables in the class here so I can access them from any method in the class for, or even from my action listener method that I'm implementing. I have three labels, display field, which is the label that we have right here. This is my display field. I just set the color to white and then we have to write the code for the opaque to be true so the color is going to be visible and I will show you where we did that and then if I go uh, back again you will see that I have two more labels first number and second number and this is where I'm intending to save my numbers those labels will not be visible in the interface because I did not add them to the panel and finally I have a string here I'm calling it to parse. The string is going to contain the number I'm intending to parse. Then I will use the parse double from the double class to give me a number which is a double. These are all my buttons that we have seen in the user interface. And in my constructor here, I'm creating those variables. So I'm creating a new frame, a new panel, and I'm creating the buttons, assigning those values to the button. So the B1 is the new button that contains the number one and then I'm just setting the size and the location of the button and adding it to the panel same thing for the button the second button so and the third and every single button in there and if I go to the label itself which should be somewhere down here this is my label display field is a new label and then I set the background color to color dot white and then this is just the size of it and this is the line that is going to allow you to see your color reflected on that label. If I take off this line, it's not going to be white. It's going just to be a transparent label. And then I added it to my text field, uh, to my panel. Uh, these are the rest of the buttons. And then what I did is I said add action listener to every single button in my interface. So b one.add action listener this b2 that add action listener and the action listener is this again so all of them are going to be the same now how will I customize my action listener this is going to come in the action performed method so in the action performed method I want to check whether I click the first button the second button or the third button so let's do a simple test and based on that simple test you will be able to figure out which button got clicked. So I'll say if e which is the event dot get source this is going to return to me the object in which the event is happening. If this is equal to b1 for now what I want to do is just a simple print that says button1 got clicked and let me just copy this back again 
if it's equal to B2, then button 2 got clicked. So let me save this and try to run it. Now I should see everything pop up here in my console. So let me just make it a little bit bigger and here is my application. So when I click this, it says button 1 got clicked. If I click this, button 2 got clicked. And the rest have nothing because I don't have if statements. So what I can do is I can come here in, where, in which I placed my print statement and do whatever I want in this area. Now when I click the button that says number 1, I need to display something on my label. And I need to include this in the string that I want to parse. So first of all, I will say to parse, which is my string, plus equal 1. And then my label, which I called uh, display field, if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. Yep, I called my label display field is going to be whatever that parse method is showing. So display field dot set text. Set text. I need to set it to whatever to parse has. Let me copy this into the second line here, but this time is going to be two. And we will copy all of this for the number for the other numbers. So let me just copy those if statements. This is three and four, this is five and six, seven and eight, nine and zero, and then one more for the dot. So I will not need the last one. And let me just go and fix those. So if it's button one, I'm adding one. If it's button two, I'm adding two. If it's three, I'm adding three. And if it is four, I'm going to add four. And so on. So this is five. And this one is going to be number six. This one is going to be number seven. I'm going to add 7 right here. And this one is going to be number 8. I will add 8. And then this is number 9. And I will add 9. And the last two are 0. Be 0 for the 0 button. And then I think we call this dot button. So let me just make sure. I called it B dot. So let me go here for the last one and I will say if this is called B dot then I will add a dot to my string to parse. Now let me run this and test it out. So 253.5 Eight, five. So I'm not adding the dot, so let me see if I make it as a character, maybe that fixes it. Eight, eight, dot, nine, nine, nine. No, the dot is not working, so let me just try to um sys out here and see if I'm not detecting this dot dot clicked. This is by the way how I check if I click the right button or not. Yeah, dot is not clicked. So I think I did not add an action listener to the dot, which is what I need to do here. So b dot dot add action listener. Now if I run this back again, it should work just fine. Eight eight dot. Yep. Now my dot is working. Okay. 
So um, now I'm able to add the number. My next step is when I click any one of those buttons, this should be erased and it should be saved in my first number and the next time it should be saved in my second number.